Creation of all our hearts and pleasing in thy sight, O God. Amen. Amen. Well, please be seated. Though no one join me, still I will follow. What a beautiful phrase. Uh, this week, thankfully, this morning, the air quality is much better, but the last few days we've had poor air quality, and this has become, unfortunately, a regular thing. We're now uh, getting prepared and, and now getting in the habit of this time of year having to check what the air quality is before we do certain activities because it's getting more and more dangerous to be going outside, to exercise, to spend time outside when the wildfires are bringing uh, such uh, awful toxic things into our air. And it's difficult to breathe and uh, it's very sad that it's becoming regular and normal and part of what we have to do. And unfortunately, there's some research out now that shows that poor air quality can affect our cognitive skills that day. So researchers got access to some of the games that we like to play on our tablets or phones or devices. And they're able to look, well, people living in these regions with bad air quality, how did that affect uh, the way they played these games? And they found that uh, it, a bad air quality can affect your score by five or six points. Or, or the way it was phrased was, um, if you normally play like solitaire or something and you finish and you score in the 90th percentile, when the air quality is poor, you might score in the 84th or 85th percentile, which is just horrifying that uh, to think that you can, because of poor air quality, you can go from an A minus to a B, simply because uh, the air quality is so poor. And so on these uh, days when the air is really bad, maybe don't make uh, epic life-changing decisions, right? Maybe don't decide to, you know, to move or to quit your job or to do this or do that unless uh, your, your cognitive capacity comes back when the air clears up. But when we think about making decisions, you know, part of our life and who we are is a series of small decisions that kind of add up and make us who we are. These little decisions here, little decisions there, kind of forms us and makes us who we are and who we have become. And we see that on a, a small scale in our own lives, how do you spend each day? But you also see that on a very big scale where con consistent and repeated small and medium and even big decisions can have disastrous results. Uh, Moving here for me was amazing for so many reasons. I love living in the East Bay, but one of the biggest and best reasons is that I went from a place where my representative in Congress was Mark Meadows, the head of the Tea Party Caucus, and now living here in Oakland, uh, my representative is uh, Barbara Lee, Reverend Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and I can't quantify the uh, increase that I've experienced in my representative. And Barbara, Congresswoman Barbara Lee is in the news these days because the war in Afghanistan, finally after 20 years, is supposedly coming to an end, and she was the only one who voted against it. And this 20 years, now there's lots of reflection. What happened over 20 years? Why did this take 20 years? What in the world went wrong? And I think I, 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 my first thought is, well, what went wrong is we should have listened to Barbara Lee. And number two, uh, well, then there, we just made a lot of really bad, small, medium, and large uh, choices that led to this outcome. And it's incredibly complicated. And I have sympathy with those making those decisions and history can judge whether or not they were good decisions. And one thing that's horrifying about this is that America spent $2 trillion over 20 years. So to break that down, that's $100 billion a year uh, for 20 years in Afghanistan and in this war. And an, another way to break it down is it's $274 million every day. $274 million every day for 20 years. So think about just looking back on, on the decisions that have been made that led to that astronomical amount of money being spent on a war that seems to have ended pretty poorly. And what if uh, the federal government had given the East Bay region 
a billion dollars a year, much less the hundred billion that it spent in Afghanistan. What if they said, here you go, East Bay region, here's a billion dollars every year. Could we have combated homelessness? Could we have set up uh, free or very affordable daycare for single parents? Could we have built and maintained facilities for people struggling with mental health issues so that they're not you know, sleeping under bridges and living homelessly? I mean, what could we have done with just a billion dollars a year, much less $274 million a day for 20 years? And I think, you know, there'll be a lot written on this. I think it's still a little fresh, but you'll see that there were small decisions and medium and big sized decisions that went throughout the years that led to us getting to this point where it just seems incoherent. And uh, again, I, I, I guess we should continually reinforce we all should have listened to Congresswoman Barbara Lee. But how do we make decisions? How can we make better decisions for us? Uh, I, I talked to Ben and we chose this, that him, I have decided to follow Jesus because the gospel reading for today is Jesus doing this hard teaching and everyone saying, this is too difficult. I don't wanna follow this guy anymore. And they start leaving. And the disciple, Jesus turns to the disciples and they say, where, where are we going to go? Who else has the words of eternal life? And they decide, even though it's not popular, they decide to continue to follow Jesus. And I love especially that second verse, though no one joined me, still I will follow. And how do we take that and make that decision each and every day? How do we make small, really good decisions that can equip us in the big picture so that we're making and becoming more faithful followers of Jesus. Well, we get a great answer in today's epistle and it starts out, even it uses this militaristic imagery, which can be a little disconcerting for a lot of us who are committed to peace and against violence. But it starts out by saying our, our struggle is against um, the, the spiritual realms, the spiritual enemies that we have. And so if we think of, we go out and we live in the physical realm, but we're also connected to the spiritual or the mystical world around us. How do we put on the mystical armor of God? Not the physical armor, uh, again, it uses this military language, but how do we equip ourselves with the mystical armor of God? And I love, it begins, the belt of truth. Think about every day trying to put on the belt of truth, the belt that holds everything together, the belt that keeps it all going, and the belt of truth uh, is essential today <laughs> to start our day with the belt of truth, because not only are lies being perpetuated and propagated, there are so many lies that when you refer to some, now we refer to this one as the big lie. Uh, right? And it's still going on and it's still having ramifications and uh, inciting people to acts of violence and hate and cruelty. And so we start out the day, well, I got to put on the belt of truth. And then you get the uh, shield or you get the chest protector of righteousness, the shield of faith. You put on the shoes that proclaims the gospel of peace. So the shoes of peace. You put on the helmet of salvation, and then the only offensive weapon described here is the sword of the, that is the word of God, which I would say the word of God is one that centers around love and grace and kindness. So the only thing in this spiritual mystical armory that is an offensive weapon is a weapon of love and grace and kindness. And so how do we, what, what little habits can we get in every morning to make sure that we are equipped to go out in the world and love the people around us, even though it's really hard? How can we do things to make sure, make these little decisions? All right, I got to put on the belt of truth and then put it, make these little decisions so that, you know, when something happens and you want to think horrible thoughts about someone. Or you want to think horrible thoughts about yourself where you're like, ah, oh, those voices from maybe your childhood or a teacher or a parent or someone that's like, you're no good. 
you're not good enough, uh, you don't have enough money, you don't have enough this, you don't have enough that. When those voices start coming, how do we like say, well, I have the shield of faith and that's going to protect me because I believe in Jesus and I believe that God loves me no matter what. And we use that shield of faith to block those voices from coming at us and disrupting us. And we have the belt of truth that says none of that is true. I am loved by God. I am enough. And then we get the, the shoes of proclaiming the gospel of peace. We have the shoes of peace. And so when people want to be violent towards us in word or action, we can maybe just walk away or use our shoes of peace to take us somewhere that is more loving and gracious and kind. And then the helmet of salvation and the chest protector of righteousness. We have these things that just keep reinforcing that we go out and as we battle the mystical forces that are out in the world, sometimes in our own head, we have made these small decisions to faithfully follow Jesus. And it's hard. And there are all kinds of things out in the world, both physical and spiritual, that are, are bringing us down. There are things that want to keep us from making good decisions and being faithful followers of Jesus, being gracious and kind and loving to all those around us. But as we see in the example of Afghanistan and America's war there, small, big, and medium-sized decisions can ultimately lead to really, really disastrous, wasted uh, results. And so this day, how can you remind yourself that you have the armor of God and you can make good decisions? How can you decide to put on the belt of truth, the chest protector of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and then go out and use the sword to attack people with grace and kindness and love. Amen. Amen.